haunted hiking trails, creepy old graveyards, abandoned ghost towns, and old buildings where spirits lurk. Come and explore some of these most haunted places where people just like you and me come face to face with ghosts. This is folklorist and author Jeanette Quackenbush with Backroads Books by 21 Crows. I discover and research old ghost stories, folklore, and legends, then pass them on to you. I have found a whole bunch of these haunted locations of legends and folklore. Now let me help you find your scary place where our natural world and their supernatural world collide. Something peculiar lurks in a wild pocket of overgrown scrub meadows mixed with deep young woodland in Belmont County, Ohio. It is just off Interstate 70 and those who pass along the highway usually sense that there is more to the land than meets the eye. It has an uninviting appearance in certain areas and justly so. The once rich land was stripped clean by 70 years of surface mining. It left it a bleak and barren wasteland, inhospitable and desolate, with its terrain so deeply gashed and gouged that it is unidentifiable from the once tidy rolling hillsides of yesteryears. But not so long in the past, and when there was little more left to steal from the earth, the Ohio Division of Wildlife bought up the dying property, revived the land, and allowed it to heal and grow back to its wild self again. But not all the earth appeared to grasp this fresh new start. Those with a keen perception take note in a certain section that something has changed, shifted, altered during its plundered past. It was as if when peeling back the flesh of the terrain, then gouging out the soul of the land, something wicked was free from the bowels of the earth, something long buried, something that should never return, something so dreadfully evil it still walks as if the land beneath its feet is still quite dead. You see, something happened in this little pocket and it transpired like this. Egypt Valley Wildlife Area was once a land of fertile farmland and forest wilderness. From the late 1820s to the early 1900s, it was home to the small and sparsely inhabited town of Egypt, population of about 10. Egypt was mainly known for the place folks stopped to chat about the weather or the crops while their grain was ground into flour and middlings for it had a grist mill along the shallow Stillwater Creek. A few homes were in the town proper and the rest of its residents were settled on small homesteads for miles around it. It had a post office, schoolhouse, and a small cemetery. There was a little Methodist church within a short buggy ride for those who were devout. It was within a few miles of this very little town that a horrible murder occurred in the deep throes of the winter of 1869. In the 1800s, it was common for young unmarried girls to work as housemaids to help out their families and keep them busy before marriage, performing light housework like cleaning fireplaces, dusting the furniture, washing clothing, and generally picking up after those who lived in the household. Much of the time, employers provided the girls with room and board and a stipend for their work. 13-year-old Louisa Fox did just that for a local coal mine owner, Alex Hunter, and his family who lived in the town of Sulesville, just a couple of miles away from her father's farm. But on a late afternoon of January 21st of 1869, while she was returning home from her employers, 22-year-old Thomas Carr, one of the miners also in Hunter's employ, abruptly stopped her on the road. The man known locally for his drunken bouts, braggarting twaddle, and angry temper had been pursuing the little girl relentlessly since the previous autumn. He had several times accompanied her from work to home. John Fox, Louisa's father, questioned Carr with a wary eye, but the miner insisted he only walked with Louisa to watch over her because of her tender age. Louisa refused any idea of courting the old man again and again. However, it was brought to her father's attention by Louisa herself that Carr had asked her to marry him some weeks earlier. The child asked her father but to please to refuse the peculiar, threatening, and unpleasant man. She had no interest in him. Although Louisa and her father both thwarted continued advances and gift bestowing by Carr, the stalking had come to a head on that fateful day as he followed her from room to room at the Hunter home, asking her to marry him. Noting Carr's strange behavior, Louisa's employer tried to persuade the young girl to stay at the house for her safety until they could take her home by horseback. She refused. 
When her six-year-old brother, Willie, came to escort her home, she left with the boy, setting out around four or five in the afternoon. After several attempts of car to waylay Louise on the path home, she tried desperately to elude him along the isolated roadway by running at some points. Then, as Louisa and her little brother passed a small chestnut orchard, a stone story from the home, Carr made his move and crept from beside a fence by the trees and into their path. Mm -hmm. Carr asked the girl to marry him once again. She refused, telling him that she was far too young to be wed. He then pulled a razor from his pocket, tossed her by one shoulder to the ground and slit her throat. By the time her father had hastened to the spot, he had found young Louisa lying dead in a small ditch by the road where Carr had dragged her during the short struggle. Carr was hunted down and eventually apprehended and hanged. Years later, the Hannah Coal Division of the Consolidation Coal Company would drive the living from their homes during a strip mine boom. They laid bare the farmland, barns, churches, houses, and old mills around Egypt and Sulesville. Along the way, they chewed a path to the place where Louisa grew up, lived, thrived, and died. Their GEM gem machine, the name stands for Giant Earth Mover, stripped the land and nearly obliterated the township of Kirkwood. It took and took from the soul of the earth and dug and dug until it hit something dark and deep that comes with the same greed and gluttony and lack of empathy of those who unearthed its ugly spirit. Because something remains. It is that dark thing that got dug up. It lingers around a stone tucked into the Egypt Valley Wildlife Area, marking where Carr murdered Louisa. It lurks along the roadway, creeping on an old path a happy little girl once took. It stops. It waits. Then it moves toward a small hillside, then a ditch, and it lingers there as if savoring that moment on January 21st, 1869, that others think is beyond horror. But it feels was delightful and savoring and sweet. Then it disappears. Unless, of course, it sees someone else that catches its eyes. <laughs>